recently we've seen on applications for medical students during their interviews, we kind of got some uh, some secret information passed to us by someone who gave the interviews. And one of the questions that they asked medical students was they had to answer a scenario in which a patient asked to see a physician. And the correct answer for the medical student applicant was to explain why physicians weren't the be all end all and that there are other very important members of the team. So here's a little more information from a physician who says that they conducted interviews for Stanford Medical School candidates, and they actually took some pictures of what they were told to discuss with the applicants. First of all, the students had to read a background on the topic of non-physician practitioners and then answer a question about it and then discuss back and forth with the interviewer different aspects of the question. The interviewer was told to introduce themselves by their first name only. They were instructed to have the applicant read the scenario and then they had eight minutes to discuss the issues and then another two minutes after they were done to give scoring for the applicants based on their response. They were also instructed not to give the applicants any feedback as they were discussing these issues. So here were the instructions for the applicants. The scenario is that non-physician allied health professionals such as nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and other advanced health professionals work both independently and alongside medical doctors in patient care. How would you respond to a patient who demands the service of a quote medical doctor rather than an allied health professional in their health care. So a couple of really interesting points here. First of all, that a patient is demanding the service instead of requesting, and the fact that medical doctor is put into quotation marks. And also really interesting that this scenario emphasizes that non-physician practitioners work independently, whereas in fact, in about half the states of the union, they do not work independently, nurse practitioners do not, and PAs only have independent practice in one state. And further in California, which is where this interview was taking place, and at that time, there was no independent practice for either nurse practitioners or physician assistants. The interviewer was supposed to use this background and theory sheet, which stated that the AMA and the Canadian Medical Associations have emphasized the complex roles of physicians that extend beyond what is traditionally found in medical textbooks. But they say at the same time, new programs and roles are developing. For example, the addition of physician assistants has been an asset to many healthcare facilities. And they say that while it's important to recognize that we all need to work within our scope of practice, they say at the same same time, it is important to ensure that the public understands the roles of different healthcare providers and that some services are more successfully delivered by other members of the healthcare team. And they would like points to be covered, including the concept that each member of the healthcare team is specialized and has a unique role. They also say that they need to discuss the concept that doctors are often put on a pedestal that can compromise care if they are being asked to provide services that would be better delivered by another member of the healthcare team. And of course, the concept of scope of practice. But what's really interesting is that they say that there continues to be power imbalances in healthcare teams as there has been a traditional hierarchy with physicians being on the top. After reading this scenario, the interviewer is asked to discuss the following issues. First of all, they want the applicant to explain what it is that a patient needs to know in order to alleviate their concerns. So the applicant is supposed to be able to explain to the patient why their demands for a physician are unreasonable and they should be just fine seeing a non-physician practitioner. They also want the applicant to discuss whether or not patients should feel threatened by the increased number and increasing responsibilities and roles of non-physician practitioners, and further, whether or not doctors should feel threatened by that same increase. They also say that doctors are sometimes given more respect than other healthcare members, and they want the applicant to explain whether or not that is justified. They also want them to discuss how important teamwork is and what some of the barriers to teamwork are. So the, uh, the interviewer is then supposed to assess the applicant to find out how well they are able to express the concept of the structure of the healthcare team, how well they appreciate the advantages of multidisciplinary teamwork, 
and that the applicant needs to acknowledge that some concerns are not simply, quote, medical issues, and that they may be better handled by allied health professionals. And what's really interesting is that the applicant is supposed to be able to apply the knowledge that they learn during this interview and what they have read and what they have discussed with the interviewer so that they can use that information to alleviate patient concerns, or in other words, explain to the patient why they don't need to be seen by a physician and that a non-physician practitioner would be able to provide their care just as well, if not better. The interviewer says that as they were discussing these issues, that every single one of the potential medical students said that nurse practitioners and physician assistants were equal to physicians because we're all a team and that the old hierarchical model of medicine needs to be changed. Now, the interviewer was not supposed to give any feedback or go off script, but they said they just could not help themselves. So they brought up the fact that nurse practitioners can practice independently without physician supervision in about half the states of the union, but that none of the students had any issue with that. And they felt that, quote, they must be well-trained as many of them take the same classes. And also that none of them had any concerns about equal say and equal pay. And what that interviewer felt that the problem was is that our own medical schools, medical societies, and national specialty academies are promoting this equivalence as a sort of propaganda under the guise of improving access. And they felt really frustrated by seeing these future physicians basically equalizing becoming a physician, the rigors of becoming a physician, to this being just the same thing as being a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. And you know, what that really says is that many of these prospective physicians do not realize that there is a very big difference between education and training between different healthcare practitioners. And that there is a reason why physicians must go through the rigors of pre-med years, medical school, and residency. So we all do have a role and a responsibility, but We at Physicians for Patient Protection believe that if patients would like to be cared for by a physician, they should have that right, and we should not be trying to talk them out of it or explaining to them why another healthcare practitioner would be better off to serve their needs. So if you agree with this and you'd like to help us promote and advocate for physician-led care for all patients and truth and transparency among healthcare practitioners, we encourage you to join our group. It's called Physicians for Patient Protection. Our website is physiciansforpatientprotection.org.